Very good morning. I am um, happy to record again some uh, messages on the series Living, Simple Living with God. It's been a long time. I've been very busy and traveling. I think it's good to, uh, to make a new series of uh, short messages in this uh, same stream that I did before. I'm now recording from uh, a new place in Germany and um, I really like this place. I have, when I look out, I look at the fields and the, the meadows. It's very peaceful here. So it's a very good spot to share some stories and um, sow some seeds through YouTube for people to use that in their personal life to improve their circumstances. You will see I am a medical doctor so I am very aware of the nature and of the laws of nature and that sickness doesn't come just by chance and that science has done a lot to and still is doing a lot to uh, to find new ways to treat serious diseases. But like I said to, to the students in the uh, university in Delft last week, I've always, since that I'm a doctor, that's since 1981, already 37 years, or else, almost 37 years, been involved in the healing ministry of the church. And you wonder how that works. How can you, on one hand, a simple walk with the normal laws of science and treat people with medication. On the other hand, have a simple faith in God that he has the last word. And that actually medicine work, but that God's presence can change the situation for the good, definitely. So how does it work? How can you do that? How can you <coughs> combine those two things? Well, as in so many cases is the fact that your belief system has a lot to do with your experience. I became a Christian when I was in the fourth grade of my medical studies. I went through a mentally very difficult time. I was desperate and was demotivated. <coughs> Didn't know if I wanted to continue my studies. So I, I dropped out and I went to Belgium and spent some time there in the Faculty of Philosophy contemplating this big question in my heart, what is the sense of being here? What is the, where do I go to? What is the reason I'm here? <coughs> so in those days, in those terrible, fearful days, I remember walking in the old city of Ghent in Belgium being sick myself at that moment and passing by a small church. I was just wandering on the street feeling sick and I was worried. I looked at the church building, there was no one there. It was a very simple church. And I thought, well, I remembered my mom who was very faithful and had great faith in God. And I thought, well, I, I, so I, I actually what I did is I, I spoke to God. I said, God, if you are here, I looked at that church. <coughs> Can you heal me? Can you take away this sickness from me? And I went on and I went to my student's room but the next day I woke up and I was healed. 
completely healed. I had no pain. The lumps that I felt were gone. That was a miracle. I will never, be, never forget that. Though at that moment I was not able to grasp the, uh, the meaning of what happened to me. But it, it did happen. I still remember that moment. The second experience I had was, you could call this supernatural healing by the God of the Bible, was when I was almost finished with my medical studies. And I was uh, doing this internship at uh, a practice in, close, in a city close to Rotterdam. And I, one day I was thinking by myself, how can I be a doctor? Because my right ear wasn't very good. I was 50% deaf on that side. It has been inflamed for many, many years. So I was really wondering, how can I be a good doctor if, if half of my hearing system isn't working okay? So here I was sitting in my student room, just talking to God. I said, God, <coughs> how about that? I, I feel you call me to be a doctor, but I need to have a good body to do it. And then, strangely enough, I heard this voice in my inner heart, this little voice. And I will share about this little voice many, many more times. But it was the, the voice of, of, of God. And he spoke to me and he said, please, you have to ask forgiveness for your neglectance of your ear for so many years. That was so strange. Because I realized as a teenager and student, I never went to the doctor. I just kept running on and neglected this inflammation, didn't take medicine. And now here was God talking to me, telling me that I should not have neglected my ear. So I asked him, forgive me God that I just behaved in such a way. And immediately after that, I felt something happening in my ear. What happened? I don't know. I cannot describe the sensation. It was a very soft sensation. I went to the specialist that I was uh, going to on those weeks. And actually he checked my ear and he made this audiogram of my ear. And he was very satisfied. He said, I have, you have a good hearing capacity right now. So this was the second miracle in my personal life. That's why I could become a doctor and behave like every other doctor and work very hard. And at the same time have this hope that also God could come into a situation and work out something that he only could do. The third miracle that I encountered was in my family. <coughs> and these days we have now five children, but then we had uh, four children. And the youngest son, he was very ill. He, he had high fever. We were on holiday in Belgium with the, with the family. And he was laying on his bed and his breathing was very fast. <coughs> so I took my stethoscope and I checked his lungs. And I definitely found the, the murmurs the, 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 that you hear when somebody has a pneumonia. So I was really waken up because this was serious. So I said to my wife, she was always there, I said, Jeanette, let's go home and let's go to the, uh, the pediatrician because my son has a pneumonia. 
I won't go to treat him myself. That's a rule, you know. You don't treat your own children. So, but before we started doing that, she said, well, and my wife has this habit of being very um, stubborn on certain, on certain things. She said, well, why don't you just try? Let's try one day, give him an antibiotic and maybe it will help. I said, well, okay, one day we might matter. So I gave her a prescription and she went off to see if there was a pharmacy around. At the same time, I was there sitting with my sick child and I was contemplating and I was thinking, what about faith healing? I remembered I had these two occasions that happened to me personally. But actually, in, I never intentional, in, with intentionality, prayed for healing for anybody. I was just doing my work and I was enjoying the, the fact that I knew God and it helped me, it strengthened me in my work as a doctor. Never prayed for healing. Actually, I didn't believe I could do that. I didn't believe that if I would do that, God would hear me. Though, obviously, he had, he had done twice. But that was not enough for me. I had this simple doubt about that God would do that. If I would ask him. <coughs> so I thought, well, let's be clever. And I will ask my other son to pray for his brother. Because I had this weird idea that God always listens to the voice of children. So I so that happened. So my other, the older brother prayed for the younger brother. And actually, he was finished in three minutes. I just tell, told him, "Well, put your hand on your brother. Say in Jesus' name, be healed." Well, that didn't even take 20 seconds. So he was finished very fast. And then he went off playing again with his toys. And I was a bit frustrated because I had actually thought, well, he will do this in a longer time and wait for the healing to come. So what, what could I do? So I put my hand on the, on the boy, the sick child again, and felt in my spirit in my heart to hold on and to press on and not to give up and not to let go in that prayer moment before healing would have happened. I think that was a gift of God because I had no faith for healing. I had no specific experience to pray for sick people. But I felt this stubbornness inside of me. This, this absolute dedication and motivation to wait and to press on to God until he would answer. It was like pushing against the wall with all the inner heart force that I had. So I put my hand on him and I waited and I waited. And I waited, I waited. And I felt like my hand was pushing against this wall to, to one moment to have a breakthrough. It took me 30 minutes. I didn't say much. Actually, I, because my son already prayed, so I just kept on pushing in my spirit, in my heart. And then this miracle happened. So one moment I just felt, bang, there is a breakthrough, you know. I felt my, 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 my spirit man break through some barrier. And at that moment, the, the whole atmosphere changed. And the love and the presence of God's Holy Spirit rushed down on this little boy. It was an overwhelming sense of warmth and 
and compassion that rushed down and fell down on this little boy that was sleeping. And I kept on holding my hand on him. I didn't dare to let go because I felt this, the river that I felt flowing was so precious. I didn't dare to, to move and to, to change my posture. And after five minutes or so, I felt this, what God had given was in the little boy. And I could leave my hand off of him. And then I looked at him and I saw that, that the breathing had changed. He had become very peaceful. And I took my stethoscope and I listened to his lungs again. I couldn't find any of the earlier sounds. And then one hour later the fever was completely gone and he woke up. So when my wife arrived with the box of medicine, he was sitting up and he was doing fine. And on that meal that I will never forget that meal together that evening because the Lord God, the God of Israel, the God of the Bible, had taken care of my son. And one thing that was needed was faith. The stubborn faith to hold on to God and not moving and going before he sh would show up. So this was a big, big, big lesson for me. And in the other short messages that I will produce these days, I will share you more how you also can, in the midst of your own trouble or sickness, Lay your hand on promises of God in stubborn, not letting him go away so that he will hear your voice in heaven and he will answer your prayer. God bless you and I hope to meet you again in one of my small films and I hope you will be blessed by these stories because I really feel I'm, I'm a storyteller and I hope to to see you one day and hear from your testimony what God did for you.